Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about RNA. Now usually, when you hear the word RNA, you think of mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. Those are not going to be our focus today. However, if you are interested in learning more about the roles of mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA in the central dogma, in protein, synthesis and gene expression, then please see my video on the central dogma of molecular biology. But for today, we're going to learn about the types of, of RNA that I like to call those other types, those types that we don't hear about very often, but are still of critical importance in our physiology. So let's start at the very beginning, RNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. And so that acronym, RNA, actually comes from letters in this term. Ribo, that's the R, nucleic, that's the N, and acid, that's the A. So that's where we're getting that term RNA. Now, there are two major types of RNA. There is coding RNA, that RNA which codes for proteins. Uh, which we also know as mRNA, and it turns out that when RNA is transcribed in a cell, typically only roughly 20% of the RNA being transcribed is coding RNA. Of course, that's going to vary from cell type to cell type, but the other 80% approximately the other 80% of RNA that's being transcribed in a cell is actually in this other classification of non-coding RNA. So RNA, types of ribonucleic acid that do not code directly for protein. And there are three main types of non-coding RNA. There are two that we've heard a lot about, rRNA, which is a principal component of ribosomes, in fact, the catalytic component of ribosomes, and then tRNA, which we know of from translation, the tRNA is what brings the right amino acid to the ribosome to be added to a growing polypeptide chain. So we know a lot about this, but today I want our focus to be this other type of non-coding RNA, which is regulatory non-coding RNAs, or regulatory NC RNAs. Now, there are many different kinds of regulatory non-coding RNAs. Uh, I think the last time I looked, there were at least eight different types known. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that more types will be discovered as we continue our exploration into the components that make up a cell and help it to function. But for today, I just want to talk about my four favorite kinds of non-coding, regulatory, non-coding RNAs. So the first one is microRNA. It is abbreviated as miRNA. And it is important in various types of post trans post-transcriptional regulation of gene expression. What does this mean? Well, remember that transcription is when an RNA transcript is made from a DNA template. So where the information stored in a gene and DNA is transcribed into RNA. And then of course we know that that transcript ends up eventually being uh, translated into protein in the uh, the process of translation. However, microRNAs are functional in regulating the gene expression at this post-transcriptional stage. So basically, once the transcript is made, it can then be further regulated by microRNAs. This means that microRNAs can cleave or degrade mRNA uh, at, at various sort of regulatory points so that that mRNA can no longer be translated. So for example, let's say that a cell uh, transcribes mRNA in the process of transcription, and then that mRNA 
is translated a few times, a few proteins are made from it, but the cell no longer needs those proteins. It doesn't need to waste its energy and its resources making more of that protein. So microRNAs can come along and degrade that mRNA so that it is no longer being translated. Specifically, microRNA is made from single-stranded RNA, which we can abbreviate as SSRNA, that forms hairpins. So basically, one long single strand of RNA that folds back on itself and twists a little bit to form a hairpin. And that's what it looks like. And it's about 20 to 24 nucleotides long. The second type of regulatory non-coding RNA I want to talk about is small interfering RNA. It is abbreviated as siRNA. And you'll see that its major function is very similar to that of microRNA. It also deals with post-transcriptional regulation of gene expression. So it can uh, cleave or degrade mRNA that is no longer needed by the cell. It can also degrade viral RNA uh, since we know that there are many viruses that use RNA uh, for their genetic material and that viral RNA, if it's found inside of a cell where it's infecting the cell, uh, small interfering RNA can help get rid of it. It is composed, rather than being single-stranded RNA that forms hairpins, it is actually composed of double-stranded RNA. So we can abbreviate that as dsRNA. So this is double-stranded RNA, so two strands of RNA where the nucleotides are linked together, uh, complementary nucleotides linked together by hydrogen bonds. Small interfering RNA also has some interesting biotech applications called RNAi. This stands for RNA interference. And this is where these small non-coding RNAs, these are also about 20 to 24 nucleotides in length, similar to the microRNA up here. But, so the, the RNAi is when these small, uh, small interfering RNAs, siRNAs, can actually be added to a cell in an experiment, in a laboratory, uh, in order to control the cell's post-transcriptional regulation of gene expression. So this is being used by scientists to figure out, you know, what different genes do in different situations and different cell types um, and a type of regulation that controls uh, expression of various genes. Now let's go on to the third type of regulatory non-coding RNA. And that is small nuclear RNA, which we abbreviate as SNRNA. Now, small nuclear RNA has a bit of a different function. Rather than degrading or cleaving mRNA, as we've talked about with these other types of regulatory uh, non-coding RNAs, small nuclear RNAs <clears throat> have a few different types of functions. One is to help with processing of pre-mRNA. Now we've all heard many times that the process of transcription is when DNA is used as a template to make an RNA transcript. Now students will sometimes forget that RNA transcript that's made by the RNA polymerase in transcription, that is not yet mRNA. It's actually pre-mRNA. Pre-mRNA has to be further processed. Uh, for example, in eukaryotes, it needs a 5' prime cap added. It needs a poly A tail. Uh, it needs to be spliced, so those introns are spliced out, so only the exons remain, and so forth. And so that, that process where, MR, where pre-mRNA is modified to turn it into fully mature mRNA, that is regulated by different kinds of SNRNAs. SNRNAs also regulate transcription factors. Now, transcription factors are small proteins that are 
used in the process of transcription. We know that transcription uses that big RNA polymerase to make that RNA transcript from the DNA template, but there are various types of transcription factors that help to sort of initiate transcription, to help it run functionally and then help it function correctly, and also to uh, aid in the termination of transcription. And so the activity of those transcription factors uh, and the expression of those transcription factors is regulated by small nuclear RNAs. Small nuclear RNAs also are important in maintaining telomeres. Telomeres are long, repetitive stretches of DNA at the ends of our chromosomes. <clears throat> now, we know that in prokaryotes, their chromosome is typically a circular chromosome, but in eukaryotes like humans, we have linear chromosomes. And so the ends of those chromosomes are kind of fragile uh, and, and they can be degraded over time after the cell has divided so many times, those telomeres uh, are sort of getting shorter. And so those telomeres are those long repetitive stretches of DNA at the ends of our chromosomes that protect our chromosomes and keep actual genes from being degraded away. And so those telomeres are maintained in part through activity by small nuclear RNAs. Now you can see that the small nuclear RNAs, in addition to having a different set of functions than these other two non-coding RNAs we've talked about, uh, they, it, they also have a different length. They're about 150 nucleotides long, so quite a bit longer than, my, than, than micro RNAs and small interfering RNAs. So now to wrap up this video, let's talk about the fourth type of regulatory non-coding RNA. And that is long non-coding RNAs. These are abbreviated as LNC RNA. So LNC RNA, often called link RNAs. So link RNAs are important for regulating chromatin modification. If you're interested in learning about how DNA is packed around histones and packed so that it can fit within that very small cell nucleus, then you should see my other video on DNA packing and histones. Now, when DNA is packed into chromatin and it's wrapped around those histones, there are various types of regulatory processes that control which sections of DNA are tightly wrapped and which are sort of unwrapped and made accessible for transcription. Let me repeat that. Transcription needs that DNA template to make an RNA transcript of a gene in the DNA. The DNA is often really tightly wrapped around histone proteins uh, and very tightly packed together into this chromatin-like structure. And the chromatin can be modified through various types of sort of biochemical tags, things like methyl groups or acetyl groups. And, and the types of modifications present control which DNA is open and available to be transcribed and which DNA is closed and not available to be transcribed. And link RNAs regulate those processes of which types of DNA are available uh, to be transcribed at different times. Now, link RNAs also regulate various parts of transcription. They regulate splicing, which I've already mentioned once in this video, splicing where introns are spliced out, exons are spliced together um, to result in that fully functional, mature mRNA that is ready to be translated. And interestingly, link RNAs also regulate the activity of microRNAs and small interfering RNAs. So we see that there are these really um, fascinating levels of regulation where this type of RNA regulates certain things and this type regulates certain things and they are themselves regulated by other types of RNA. 
uh, and we see that um, there are just all of these levels of different kinds of regulation, which really gives the cell a lot of control over its internal processes. And then just to sort of further wrap things up, long non-coding RNA, you won't be surprised from that name, long. It is the longest of the bunch, coming in at over 200 nucleotides long, compared to maybe 150 or 20 to 24. So these are the different types of RNA that are very critical to proper functioning of your cells, but which we don't often hear about. So I hope that you learned a lot from this video today. If you're interested in learning more about the processing of pre-mRNA, that five prime cap, the poly A tail, the, the splicing, then I also have a video on that topic and I hope you will check it out. Thank you for watching Biology Professor.